the whole idea here when you're making size measurements is number one, you've got to be able to disperse the material. Okay. Stuff like this, fine powders, they want to stick together. Yeah. So if you measure them like that, you're not really getting good, repeatable uh, results. Yeah. You're not measuring the primary particle. So in this case, I'm going to put a little powder, sweet and low in here. Could be sugar. I ran out of sugar, so I went to sweet and low. All right. <laughs> <laughs> but, uh, and so then it's just a matter of once to disperse it, what we're doing is I've got a compressed air source back here. Okay. So I'm adding it to an aerosol stream. And I can control that pressure. And when that material hits that aerosol stream, it's a change in centrifugal force. And it separates it. It separates them. Okay. And some need, need more pressure. Some materials need less pressure. Metal powder, of course, you know, you're not going to break it. Yeah, yeah. Absolutely. But some stuff that are, is friable, yeah. you have to be gentle with the pressures and whatnot. So anyway, let's go ahead and make a measurement. So I'm going to shut these off. And... Uh, We'll come over here. This is the, the window. So in this case, uh, we're using the M7 range. So there's a series of lenses in here. So this is like a microscope. Okay. Except that the particles are moving. Yeah. And one of the reasons we developed this system was so we could overcome some of the limitations of microscopy. Okay. Such as particles, you know, on a slide are sitting on their flattest side. Yeah. So there's the orientation bias. Secondly, they're not dispersed. Yeah. And thirdly, there's a few particles on a slide. Yeah. Here we're going to measure potentially millions of particles in an analysis. So the statistics become really good. Yes, absolutely. So um, let's go ahead. I'll click the green button for go. Green okay. means go, right? All right. <laughs> so now it's looking at the uh, brightness. And one of the nice things as well about this system is, uh, you know, grayscale values. You know, 267 grayscale values. Mm -hmm. Well, the system automatically uh, adjusts for the grayscale value of the material. So it can be translucent, it can be opaque, and then it changes the background into white. Okay. It binarizes it, and the material will be black as it goes through. So we're going to see it come out of here okay. and start going through the measuring zone. So you hear the pressure come on. Yeah, I hear that. There's a vacuum that will vacuum everything away. Okay. And the end, here they come. We've released the hounds. <laughs> and now you see them coming through here. So every particle that you see is being saved, stored, and evaluated. Okay. And so we'll see exactly. It, so it knows when it, there are particles in the measuring zone and it starts measuring. Yep. And then it knows when there are no more particles. And, and it stops automatically. That's correct. Yeah. So now it, it cranks out the data, calculates the data, and now we're going to get some results. Okay, so let's take a look here. Hold on. Minimize that. So this is the size distribution. In this case, I, it lasted for a measurement of about 19 seconds. Mm -hmm. I measured 160,000 particles. Wow, amazing, 160,000 particles in that yes. sugar packet. Yes, a lot wow. of, there's a lot of fines. Yeah, oh, yeah, absolutely. A lot of fines, but there are some big guys too, yeah. obviously. Now, so this gives me my particle size distribution, and I see that my median is around 188 microns. Okay. Now that is a calculation of a definition of diameter. So I always say, when somebody says, well, something's so big, I always ask, well, what definition of diameter did you use? Because if you're measuring something like this, you know, it could be this, mm -hmm. it could be this, it could be this, right? So the definition becomes critical to what you're, what you're, the results you're getting. So in this case, we used something called the calculation mode was called equivalent projecting area of a circle. So it says, I see the volume here. If it were a sphere or a circle, mm -hmm. it would have this diameter. But one of the nice things about imaging is I can go back and choose other diameter values. Okay. Okay, so for example, the maximum diameters. So if it's this guy, what the system does, it draws two parallel lines every 180, uh, every degree, 180 times around every particle. So it knows where the maximum diameters are. 
knows where the minimum diameters are. Okay? Like this as well, knows where the minimum diameters are. So I can go back now and say, okay, show me, overlay the minimum diameter distribution on what we just did. I want to see what that spread looks like. And so I save it. And then I can go back here to the database, reprocess it. So now it's giving me the minimum mm -hmm. diameter distribution. I'm looking at the 10th, the median, yep. and the 90th percentiles. And then if I want to know what the maximum diameters are, I can just change that to the maximum diameter distribution. Save it. Go back. Okay, so now, now it shows me the maximum diameter distribution of all the particles that I measured, the 160,000 of them. And so it gives me an idea of the spread of you know all the particles, where you know where the fines are, where the coarse are. And some of these guys, especially maybe having a direct impact on other characteristics like flowability, you know, packing densities, all sorts of other material characteristics. Mm -hmm. Now remember, this is a volume-based measurement or a mass-weighted measurement, okay? So the big guys weigh more than the small guys or get more attention than the mm -hmm. small guys. But I could also do a number-based distribution if I wanted to, where you know, a five micron particle is equal to a, a one millimeter particle, if I wanted to. Here you say, well, there aren't any particles down there, but there are. But because you have such large particles, it's mass weighted or volume based weighted. But I can change that if I wanted to, to a number distribution. So instead of volume, I can go to number. Now you see by number, you know, it's quite, particle size. It's quite different. Yeah. Uh, yeah. It's quite different. But most particle size is done by volume. Yeah. And whether it's laser diffraction or sieving, mm -hmm. it's all volume related. It's volume -based. But it's nice to know what sometimes what your number distribution looks like as well. So that's size information. And if I look at, uh, so I'm going to change this back to EQPC. And I'll show you something else that's quite impressive. One of the nice things is, as well, then you get shape information. So in this case, I've got particle size down here, and I've got aspect ratios. That's the minimum versus the maximum lengths and widths on this side, with one equaling a, a minimum and maximum being the same. Okay. It'd be like a sphere. Yeah. So the farther you go down, the longer your particles get. So you see, starting at about 40 microns, and well, there's a, a dip here, and then starting at about 40 microns, you get the shape of the curve of the aspect ratios across the size range. Okay. And so maybe I want to look at some of these guys. Yeah. So there's a particle gallery. So we will go to that. And now, I can ask the system to show me particles that I'm interested in. Okay. That have certain size and shape values. Yeah. So in this case, I say, okay, show me the particles that have an equivalent projected area of a circle greater than 150 microns, but a low aspect ratio. I want to see the long guys, for yeah. example. So now it'll go back through all those particles, and now it's going to show me exactly those particles that fit that criteria okay. and one of the nice things about that then is if I'm just interested in these particles then I can go back and reprocess the whole data set just to get results on these guys so if you've got multimodal or multi-component mixtures for example this is an awesome break way down. to break it down yeah absolutely that you can't do with yeah, sieving or laser diffraction or anything like that yep. So, that makes a lot of sense. So this is really a powerful tool yeah. for guys doing powder research. And uh, I can click on this, I'll click on one of these guys, and um, it shows me what frame you know that particle is in. That's okay. the particle. It shows me all of its criteria. Now we got minimums, you know, of 
of 231 microns, but maximum of 526 microns. And that's the guy. And if I wanted to, maybe there's another orientation I want. I could take it over there. Now it's going to show me okay. what that size is. Um, but I can click on any of these guys on any of these frames, and it immediately Measure comes up. And it tells me what the data, what the data is on that particle. And this is the video of the analysis. Okay. And you know, uh, sometimes folks say, "Well, we don't have particles like that." And you say, "Oh, yes, you do." <laughs> no, we don't. Yes, we do. And so you can come in here, and you know, maybe these are the guys that. Nobody believes you have. And then, if you wanted to, you know, you could send them okay. a little report of those particles showing you, you know, okay, yeah, what, there they are. What's actually in there. What's actually in there, yeah. Now, so if you're dealing with oversized, you know, you want to control the oversized population. Because a lot of times, that's what that's in the process. How hard is it?